His name is Andre. And he was the person who, as I, I as we reveal in my interview with him, he was worried that this plan where the DNC was collaborating with the Ukrainian government was going to backfire. He's a loyal Ukrainian who was like, well, I think this is going to, this is not going to work out well. But he was introduced to a Democratic operative who worked in the Clinton White House named Alexandra Chalupa. She's Ukrainian. And well, let's just hear, that's what this first clip is. I interviewed him yesterday. Yeah, and uh, she asks me, you should talk, guys. You have a lot in common. You should get to know each other well. And Andre, you should help her. And then she backs off and, and, and Chalupa, Alexandra Chalupa introduces herself, says, I work for the DNC. And we're working with the Hillary team, and we are working really closely on getting dirt and any information connecting, uh, at that time, presidential candidate Donald Trump and his team, any of his team members, and with Russia or any Russia mafia, as, they, as she said. And I was like, why, do you need, why, why are you looking for that information? Because we plan to have a committee hearing in Congress uh, in September, October, right before the elections, to take, at that time, presidential candidate Donald Trump off the election. Hey there, everybody. This is Lee Stranahan, and uh, appreciate uh, Alex letting me fill in for him with the rest of the hour here. Let me just tell you a little bit about myself. I host a uh, show on Sputnik Monday through Friday called uh, Fault Lines with Nixon Stranahan. And uh, we do that show every morning. I, but the story we're going to talk about, the reason I mention that is because, so here I am, a guy, I host a show on Sputnik, which a lot of media sources, well, don't, we're not, don't take anything from that. They're funded by Russia. Avoid that media source. And I'm telling it, I'm telling this story on Infowars. A lot of people, oh, don't, you know, Alex Jones can't do, talk, take that as a source. But the story that we're telling wasn't actually originated by me or by Infowars. It was originated by Politico, an establishment political organization, and Ken Vogel, who was later hired by the New York Times. That's where he works now. This is an establishment reporter. And they reported that the Ukrainian embassy, the Ukrainian officials, were colluding with the DNC with this operative named Alex Janet Chalupa. That's what this story was about. That's what they discussed. And it goes into a great amount of detail about that. And part of what it was, there's a whistleblower who worked at the embassy. And this whistleblower uh, was somebody who I'd wanted to talk to to follow up on that reporting. So for over a year, I worked on that. His name is Andre. And he was the person who, as I, I as we reveal in my interview with him, he was worried that this plan where the DNC was collaborating with the Ukrainian government was going to backfire. He's a loyal Ukrainian who was like, well, I think this is going to this is not going to work out well. But he was introduced to a Democratic operative who worked in the Clinton White House named Alexandra Chalupa. She's Ukrainian. And well, let's just hear, that's what this first clip is. I interviewed him yesterday. And this is, I'm so excited because this is, uh, this interview brings the story back to life. I wanted him to go on the record. Now you'll hear it in his own voice. This is how he was introduced by the Ukrainian embassy officials to Alexander Chalupa. Yeah, and uh, she asks me, you should talk, guys. You have a lot in common. You should get to know each other well. And Andre, you should help her. And then she backs off and, and, and Chalupa, Alexandra Chalupa introduces herself, says, I work for the DNC. And we're working with the Hillary team and we are working really closely on getting dirt and any information connecting, uh, at that time, presidential candidate Donald Trump and his team, any of his team members, and with Russia or any Russia mafia, as, they, as she said. And I was like, why, do you need, why, why are you looking for that information? Because we plan to have a committee hearing in Congress uh, in September, October, right before the elections to take, 
at that time, presidential candidate Donald Trump after the election. Okay, so I want you to get the significance of that. There's a few things there. First off, this is this is not me telling it. This is the guy who did it. This is the guy who's the source for the Politico story. This is why it's so significant, because this is an unimpeachable source. This is a guy, guy who's the source in the story that no one's ever questioned. They just ignored it. So what he's saying is clearly Alexander Chalupa introduced herself to him as part of the DNC, that she was specifically looking for Trump. And this was in uh, March or early April. He say, thinks it's around there, but he thinks it was March. I'd have to look it up, but let's go with March. That was before the Trump, think about this. Early March, that was before the Trump Tower meeting, which they're now saying is evidence of Russian collusion. That's before, uh, that's, that's even before, uh, uh, well, I'm trying to think of the other thing that they, they always use as an excuse for this. But early March is when, oh, I know, the DNC break-in. The DNC break-in was reported in June, forgive me. So this is even before that, right? They've made up this narrative. The DNC made up the Trump-Russia narrative before any of the things that they used that came later to prove it. So She's introduced herself to him as, I'm with the DNC, I'm looking for dirt on Trump or Manafort, okay? Paul Manafort's been targeted, think about this. They're making a big deal about these pleas, uh, you know, being found guilty yesterday on eight counts. He's been targeted by the DNC. That's what you're revealing here. He's been targeted by the DNC since early 2016. And what you've seen has been a, a basically a, a kangaroo trial, a, you know, a show trial here for Manafort, for the person who specifically was being targeted uh, by Chalupa. Now, Andre, the person I'm interviewing here, his job was to coordinate with campaigns, not in a, a bad way. In other words, every embassy coordinates if you need a press release about something, right? But they came to him specifically, and he said this in the interview with me, and said, you will not coordinate with the Trump campaign. So that was the first thing. They told him to not coordinate with the Trump campaign. But they also told him to work with this woman, Alexandra Chalupa. And Andre, the reason I say he's a brave whistleblower is he said, uh, I'm, why do you want me to do this? This is not what we do. We're not supposed to favor one candidate over the other. That's not what we're supposed to do. And he was threatened over it, and they threatened that he would be fired. And to his credit, he quit rather than stick around for the corruption. Uh, he did not talk to Alexandra Chalupa again, but he told me in the interview that there's other evidence that he's aware of that exists out there. So that's why in the story, one of the first things I did was make sure that the entire interview got to certain public officials who I know and trust. And there's only a couple of them, right? There's not many you can know or trust, but because this is significant evidence, I think, not of a, a conspiracy. There's no other way to put it, that the DNC was working with the Ukrainian government as far back as March, and don't forget, March was also significantly, March 2016 was around the time the Loretta Lynch started talking about, hey, maybe we should do stuff. Maybe we should start a wiretap program. So don't forget that's significant as well. When we come back, I got a little bit more to add to that timeline. We'll be back. I'm Lee Stranahan. You're watching InfoWars. Everybody, how you doing? I'm Lee Stranahan. Welcome back. Thanks again to Alex Jones for letting me fill in for him this hour. You know, I th one of the things, I'm, I'm just going to say this. I hope, Again, I host a show called uh, Fault Lines with Nixon, Stranahan, and Sputnik, Monday through Friday, 7 to 10 a.m. But one of the things I like about talking to an InfoWars audience, I'm going to be honest, is I don't have to dumb it down. Uh, what I mean by that is I can mention the Atlantic Council 
for instance, as I did in, in that last segment, and know that a lot of people in the InfoWars audience immediately go, okay, the Atlantic Council, I understand how that connects to certain things. If you don't know how that connects, okay, that's fine. It seems like an obscure reference, but it's nice to talk to an audience who actually does understand how these things connect, uh, it, at least much more so than an audience that just watches the mainstream media. So uh, if I reference some of these things that seem a little obscure to some people, that's okay. Other people in the audience may know what I'm talking about. Um, the thing about this story that was very significant to me was that it was as clear collusion as you could get, but it was followed by interference. You know, they talk about Russian collusion and interference. Again, this is a narrative that the DNC made up. The real collusion and interference was with the DNC and the Ukrainians but they projected it onto the Republicans. This is the craziest thing. They projected exactly what they did onto the Republicans, but it was the DNC colluding with the Ukrainian government, not just a low level official, but with the uh, ambassador, Charlie, right? And so this political article exposed all that. Yesterday I did a, a long interview. I'm gonna break that up, put that into, uh, sort of bite-sized bite chunk article form soon. But I just played a clip from the, in, the, in the last segment from this interview. One of the things I was interested in was after this political article came out, did my source, he's, he, he's not hard to find, uh, did my source get a lot of calls from the media? In other words, this should be a big story, right? So you'd think the media would track it down. So here's what he said. Let's let's play that clip. Any reason uh, when the story broke uh, in Politico, how many journalists have contacted you to confirm that story or or get comments? Hardly, hardly anybody from Washington. Yeah, that's it. No, nobody contacted him. And you'd think, like I say, a big story like this, a person not hard to find, they would want to get in touch with them, but they didn't. Because the reason they didn't want to get in touch with them was because this was the narrative that was set, right? This is the narrative that the Democrats had decided upon well before, if again, if you look at the timing on what he's talking about, this was March, April, very significant in the timeline. It's before the Russian hack was announced it's well before the Trump Tower meeting, right? All the things that they say prove Russian collusion, this is well before that, and it's exactly the same narrative. Now, uh, I think this is significant, especially, again, talking to an InfoWars crowd, because who's one of the people coming after Alex, right? Clearly, it's CNN, and the reason CNN is coming after Alex. Here's one of the reasons I think there's two, two reasons, actually. One of them is it's legacy media versus new media, which Alex and I talked about before. It's an, you know, an old media conglomerate, CNN, uh, looking at an uh, upstart like Alex getting much bigger ratings for much less investment and going, oh, we got to shut this down. But, but there's an ideological thing in there, too which is CNN is part of the media establishment that keeps a, a, a narrative going. And this is shown here because when this political article resurfaced, and it resurfaced, again, it came out originally in uh, January, 2017. Then a few months later, I'd been following it for a little while be before that, but Sarah Sanders mentioned it in a press briefing, in a White House press briefing, and suddenly the whole article flared up again. Who came to the defense of the media narrative but CNN, okay? CNN's job was to tamp down the appearance that this story had any substance to it. So what CNN did was they contacted Alexandra Chalupa 
And this is on record. There's a CNN article. If you look it up, if you look up Alexandra Chalupa, uh, uh, D, you know, DNC Ukraine, something like that, scandal, something like that. You'll find this story from CNN. There you go. Yep, first on CNN. There it is. They found it very quickly. First on CNN, former DNC contractor denies working with Ukrainian officials on anti-Trump research. Okay. So what they did was they, here's the way that CNN does their journalism. They went to her and they said, hey, were you colluding with the, the government of the DNC? And she said, no, I wasn't. I wasn't doing oppo research at all. And then CNN goes, okay, thanks. And that's what they print. If they bothered to look, her sister, Andrea Chalupa, had tweeted out not once, but twice. My sister, Alexandra, was doing opposition research for the DNC. She tweeted it out. Her own sister had tweeted that out two times, right? And we also knew from WikiLeaks, again, you can look at, you'll find this very easily. Look up WikiLeaks, Alexandra Chalupa. You'll find that in an email that was exposed by WikiLeaks, Alexandra Chalupa was reporting on the opposition research she was doing on Manafort to uh, Louise Miranda, who was the uh, director communicate communications director for the DNC. She's literally reporting to him. Now, by the way, that's significant. Again, I'm going to get a little deep here for the InfoWars audience. It's significant because Louise Miranda was one of the people who was put into place by the Hillary Clinton campaign when the DNC made the uh, deal with the Hillary Clinton campaign, the joint fundraising agreement, the JFA, when they made that, Hillary Clinton demanded that they be able to pick the communications director. So that guy was the guy put into place when Hillary made the deal to take over the DNC. So in, so in other words, when Chalupa's reporting to this guy, this is effectively reporting to Hillary. That's what that's what I want you to understand. This is a, a guy put into place by Hillary. So she's reporting on how she was colluding with Ukrainian journalists at the open world. Uh, uh, she misnames it. It's the, it's, the, uh, it's the Open World Foundation. It basically it's part of the Library of Congress. And by the way, again, a little deep dive for Infowars people started by George Soros who's no longer involved with it, sort of, I guess, but he's one of the people who founded it. And so she had used that resource, which is supposed to be a nonpartisan governmental resource, part of the Library of Congress, to host these Ukrainian journalists. And she was telling the story to, again, the DNC people. So for her to go on CNN, I mean, this, is, this had all been, by the way, that email that we just showed from WikiLeaks, that was in the original political article. So when CNN, to try to debunk the Sarah Sanders talking about the political article, they didn't even want to debunk the political article. What did they do? They printed what Alexandra Chalupa said, and they ignored what she'd said in the email. It's the biggest, lamest cover-up ever. And this is why CNN is terrified of someone like Alex because we don't play that game here at InfoWars, so. You know, someone very profoundly once said many years ago that if fascism ever comes to America, it'll come in the name of, li of liberalism. I'm a nasty woman. If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. Buy my Cortex Quick pills and you will not die! Now available in mixed berries. Cortex Quick. Do not believe anyone who says these pills are just spray painted Mike and Ike. Cortex Quick! Thank God they didn't get the formula or didn't get the jump on us with ultimate female force. My beautiful wife had three children one day after she even looked at a bottle of female force. But let me tell you, as Tuck Buckford knows, my cousin, and as I know as well, we came up with the ultimate known herbal formula for your little lady friend. 
Popeye turns into a badass when he eats spinach, my little lady turns into Godzilla when she takes it. So remember, you can get your ultimate female force today at InfoWarsLife.com or InfoWarsStore.com and tell the mainstream media they can go straight to hell as you fund the First Amendment and unlock the incredible dynamo that is your little lady friend. Woo! I love it!